Luke, many congratulations. What a thrilling, stunning performance that was. How are you feeling after just blowing the roof off this place? Yeah, I'm buzzing, to be honest. It was a, a really good performance for myself. I felt, you know, when I was struggling in certain moments where I weren't getting in quick enough, I managed to, you know, follow it up with like 180 and then a big finish or, you know, two good um, scores and then a finish. You know, I just managed to dig myself out of dig myself out of every hole I put myself in you know Ryan I know he's going to be starting off so well I don't know the stats of course but I just know he's one of the best double season hitters in the world so I said to myself if you're not going to get in and match him you're going to have to outscore him and you know I managed to do both in the end but yeah it was incredible, incredibly tough tough game for me there and you know credit goes to Ryan as well because 5-0 I know I play fantastic but it's a little bit flattering because I thought after the first four sets he could have been 4 up against any other player in the world to be honest it was just unfortunate I was just on fire there when for him. You're, when you're in that moment, and I know you touched on in previous interviews, you knew it was a good performance. Do you feel untouchable? Because it certainly looks it. Like when you go to that place, no one has got near you. I, honestly, when I was like two, three nil up, I was thinking, you know, this is this is this feels good. I, I don't feel I can lose. Doesn't mean I couldn't lose. I just felt that way, and you have to be careful not to allow that confidence to overtake. Because if you if you think too far ahead the game's not won I was still two sets away but I just felt like I was playing so well and you know even when I looked up at the stats when I was like I just turned to the left and I see I was four, you know, obviously the last set and it was 98 98 I, averaged, I think my average was and I was thinking if I got in five darts here I could get my first under average and that was just playing through my mind that's how confident I was through the game uh, and then when I went out in five and I see the stats I thought I, I finally achieved something that I think it's quite hard to when I was hitting 100 average in such a long format in, in a, a double in. So, yeah, it's, it's quite a nice achievement for myself. I know you play this, Dan, but the comparisons between you and Phil, you and Michael, are, are growing tournament by tournament because what you are doing. Do mm. you see those comparisons because of the, your performance you're putting in? Uh, not really. Phil, Phil, like I just said, Phil would do this game in, game out. I have one out of five of them games, so you can't compare me to Phil, never. And he'll always achieve more than any single player the world's ever seen. No one will ever be able to do what he's done. Michael had that period. Uh, he was just unbelievable. He, like the same, he was game in, game out. So, yeah, I just, I don't need to compare myself to Phil Michael. I would, I, I'd love to be here in 20 years to be known as the, the third best player or the fourth or fifth. You know, it's just for me, I just want to keep um, achieving and keep building the accolades up. You know, I, I said it on, on, on the stage earlier. If I can win tomorrow, it really would mean a lot to me. I think nine major finals, six major wins with the World Cup in 12 months. I just don't don't see that being beaten over the next 10 years, to be honest. I think that's quite... I'm not, I'm not saying that to sound big I just think that's an accolade that's, that's going to be incredibly hard to be beaten. Well, Luke, congratulations. Thank you. Um, Ryan Joyce plays a fantastic game today. Um, and the yes. words to sort of describe your game we've used, and I think Wayne used on commentary, was unplayable. Um, do you feel like a, on another day, maybe Ryan against a different player... It could have been the other way around. Yeah, I mean, on another day, he could have beat me. If I if I'd have played like I did, and all the three games I've played before that game, he would have beat me because he was really, really clinical. He was getting in all the time. He was in a lot of 108 ins, 146s. He, his scoring was brilliant. He was matching every time I was in a 140. He was matching it. Just the different was the big finishes, the 180s, stuff like that. So yeah, he, he not just beat any play. He could have beat me on a different day tomorrow. So I was just. I could, I'm not going to say very fortunate, but I just felt like I put in the best performance at the right time. I think a lot of people probably would have discounted me, probably thought I wasn't going to win this tournament. A lot of people thought, you know, Dimitri said yesterday that Mike was the favourite, but the only, the only way I see it is experience can prevail. And obviously when you're in them big moments for the, I don't know, the 12th, 13th time as my major semi-finals, you know, I'm not saying big it, 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 it does help you. you. You experience it so many times, but I think Mike's handling it so well that... I don't expect him to fault tomorrow. I think I've got a tough game, and he knows he's got a tough game, and it just it just adds to excitement. I think everybody really want, looks forward to tomorrow. I don't think anybody's going to look at it and think, "Well, I'm definitely going to win." I don't think anybody looks at it and thinks Mike's definitely going to win. I think it's just going to be a great game. I really do, and I really hope it is as well. Something you've obviously picked up over the last year or so is, is a favourite tag. Um, is it something that you enjoy being? You will be a fairly. Big I wasn't the favourite when I come here, though. But not in the not in the tournament. No, like, I wasn't. So in most of your in, individual games. Yeah, uh, yeah, of course, but you know, it's not something that plays on your mind. Too, and I think you, you just want to win. You know, if I'm favourite or not favourite, I, I think over the last twelve months I've shown that it doesn't affect me too much. Um, you know, anybody can beat me. 
I've said that so many times. Anybody can beat me. It's not, it's, I'm not unbeatable. But, you know, when you put in good performances like that, it gives you great confidence, makes you feel like you're unbeatable. But tomorrow is it's a major final. Anything can happen. You know, I could get blown away or I could blow Mike away. Who knows? But that's that's the excitement of darts now. And it is to, we can all look forward to tomorrow and anything can happen. Congrats. Thank you, mate. Thank Luke, you. what would it mean if you could cap off this remarkable 12 months by retaining your first major title? Yeah, I think it's fair to say that it'd be 12 months from the day tomorrow. So that would be my last opportunity to really add to it because after that it would, you know, it'd be a bit, you'd be exaggerating a bit to say, oh, he's done so well over 18 months, 24 months. But my last chance to add to that 12 month tally. Uh, but if I don't win, it's nine month, uh, nine major finals in 12 months, which is obviously fantastic. But I'd love to pick up that six. I'd love to to get to 10 majors in my career. Um, I'd love to win two world finals. You know, that's the goals I'd love to set over the next five years. You know, really feel like I could put my name up there with with a lot of the grades but yeah you have to put in these great performances to allow yourself to be in these situations and I felt like I was really good tonight if I could bring that tomorrow then it could be uh, a really really good game but Mike's playing good so yeah I, I won't take him for granted but I, I know that if I play my best then I, I stand a great chance of picking him in the major but nothing's ever given to you. Yeah yourself and Mike obviously came through the development tour system right up through the pro ranks what have you made of how Mike's performed this week? And yeah yeah that's, what, that's what I was trying to say up on the stage I kept getting the words wrong but what I was trying to say is you know uh, the UK Open uh, final it was a development tour final five six seven years ago now it's me and Mike that was the development tour final six five six seven years ago so you know 75 percent of the field tonight were development tour players it's a credit to the PDC. Like I said, if we didn't have these secondary tours, then who knows if we'd be in this situation. So, yeah, it's a credit to them, to be honest. We're really, really lucky that we got to, to get through on that. And, uh, you know, me and Michael will, will have great memories of, because we talked about earlier, we've had some great games, so we really look forward to tomorrow. Have we seen you at your absolute peak tonight, or do you feel it could be, honestly, for Mike, another level tomorrow night? I'd love to say no. <laughs> I'd love to say there's another level in me, but, yeah, I think I was pretty decent, to be, to be fair. Um, I'd just, you know, I'd be happy to be like 80, 90 percent near that because if I play like that and I don't win, then I'll just have to shake Mike's hand and say, you know, you've obviously played incredible. But I know there's levels in me that, that I can reach. But first to six does play in my favourite. It's uh, a long format. That's what I enjoy. That's what I said to my family tonight. I love, I love the long format. You know, I can go for long, long periods, and that plays into my favour. But like I keep saying, it, it doesn't matter. Who knows what can happen tomorrow? We can all just look forward to it. Thank you. Luke, Wayne Mardell said that when you walk on, there's an aura like Adrian Lewis, Taylor Van Gogh, and that can get in the opponent's mind when they're on stage waiting for you. Do you feel like that is a thing now, that there is this, this thing surrounding you where they almost can get a bit worried when you're walking on, hearing the fans, hearing the music, and seeing you walk on, the, on that stage? Uh, not really, because obviously Ryan played well. I don't think he felt it. I don't think it affected him. I was just at that level tonight that, that, that was kind of hard for him to, to match. But, yeah, I, d I don't think it will affect a lot of people. I think the only thing that can change between... You know, the game between me and Mike tomorrow is the, the occasion could get the better of him, but I don't want to, you know, put that in his head. It might not. I'm just being honest. You know, it could get the better of him. He might just relish to the challenge. So, you know, that does play in my favour. To be honest, when you've been in so many major finals, it's it, it does get easier. It doesn't it doesn't make it easy, but it gets easier. When you're in your first, I remember my first, and I just knew there are rewards that come with it, and you just sometimes can try too hard. But it's a long format tomorrow. It, it would play in my favour, but he's got the capabilities to beat me he showed that tonight he was pretty strong on the back end of the game so yeah I just got to stick with him and make sure that I don't let him run away with it Is this performance almost a relief because you've spoken this week about the throws haven't felt as smooth as it has mm. and you've faced some real battles of course Stephen Bunton sticks out so to produce that level of performance on this stage 5-0 as well is it almost a weight off the shoulders knowing that you are hitting your peak when it really matters? Yeah, it felt really good tonight. It really did. I sometimes a little confidence boost that you need. The last time I felt that way was like New Zealand Dance Masters when I won. Usually when I feel good, it, it usually goes well. But yeah, I've not really felt that great. But tonight it felt amazing. And tomorrow, it's just going to be great confidence. I'm, I'm going to feel good. I know that. It's the same way it was for the World Championships. I, played, I felt really good against Scott Williams. And then I managed to feel incredibly good in the world final and managed to play well. So, yeah, that, this will just only help my, my, my confidence for tomorrow. And, you know, that I felt really smooth. I remembered what I did tonight. Uh, and I remember it for tomorrow. Make sure my, my, my throw's in a smooth, uh, natural action. Because if it's like it was tonight, then it's going to be good. Quite a few players this week have spoken about the importance of, of family. You've got young children. Do they realise yet just how special you are and what you're doing? 
Um, probably not the youngest yet. He only quite knows what the bullseye is at the moment. <laughs> so if I'm not in that, then he ain't got a clue what's going on. But I'm sure he will. He, res he will uh, understand one day. But uh, yeah, I just I let my son be my son. I don't. He doesn't have to be involved in darts or think about darts. He does his own thing, and and I'm sure one day he'll, he'll sort of understand what his dad's achieved and be very proud of him. But you know, for me, it's. Uh, it's something that I do this for, it's to do everything for your family. I think not just me, all the players do. We all do it for our families. So that's the main reason why we're, we're always away 24-7, is you do everything for your family. Luke, huge well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers. Luke, congrats again. Thank um, you. Obviously, from a ranking point of view, going into a final, Mike Dedeker is quite an unlikely opponent. You probably wouldn't have thought it might have been him at the start of the tournament. Do you prepare any differently for someone who's less experienced? Obviously, he has no experience in televised final. Yeah, I mean, of course. I'll be honest, you just wouldn't expect that you'd be playing him in a final. You know, there's so many great players before that. But it, if you look at the way he's played, then you told me his stats before. I'd have said, well, I expect him to make the final. You know, I think he's been great. He, he probably wasn't at his best tonight. You know, I think Dimitri maybe give him too many chances, maybe try too hard. You know, he just wasn't at his best. But, you know, if I push him, he might go back to his best. So that's what I got to realise and, and not take what he played like tonight. That he's going to play out tomorrow. If I push him, then he's going to play well. And uh, you know, the, like you said, the experience sometimes can tell in the end. But we'll, like I said, find out tomorrow. We'll see what happens. It's obviously on a smaller stage, but can you take your experience from the World Final against Little? Obviously, he was a complete unknown. But going into his first ever final. Can you take experiences from that day and use it against Mike tomorrow? Um, I don't know. I think when I played Luke in the final in the Worlds, I, I generally just believed that it was never going to be a poor performance for me. Was, you know, I just I didn't believe it. Whereas for Mike, I don't know what performance I'm going to get tomorrow, and I think he probably feels the same. Sometimes I'm untouchable. Sometimes I'm very beatable. So yeah, I just think we're both going to go into that game very open-minded, believing we both can win. Um, all I can say is a long format can only suit me because of the, the the experience I've got on these long format games. I think I've in the last 12 months I've probably played about 10, 11 games of incredibly long formats. He's probably that's probably the longest format he's ever played tonight. So it can play in my favour, like I keep saying. But I'm just looking forward to tomorrow. I'm buzzing. I can't wait. It's going to be a great spectacle for us all. Congratulations, guys. Thank we'll you. See you tomorrow.